can we follow that amazing music with the worship service, but I think with their help, we can make it work. I hope you haven't eaten too much so that you don't fall asleep on us. My name is Takuhi Demirjan Petro. My first name, given name Takuhi in Armenian means? Queen. <laughs> However, I am a humble daughter of the Holy One serving the Elgin Portland pastoral charge, which is 20 minutes more west and south of us here. On August 21, 1986, I entered Canada at the border of Vermont and Quebec. Bonjour, Quebec! I came in as a refugee and got ordained at the MNO conference on May 28, 2011, exactly 25 years after my entrance into Canada. And that day was May 28, which we ordinance don't decide when we are going to get ordained, but that day happened to be the 93rd anniversary of the Armenian Independence Day. So being the very first woman ordained, Armenian woman ordained minister within the United Church of Canada, just, I can only say, I can only say, grace has brought me this far. So speaking of grace, Thank you so much. Exactly 30 years after I entered Canada in 2016, my very first book of poetry, prayers, and photography came out. And this is all original work. The pictures are taken in Quebec and Ontario. That means it's a perfect representation of our Eeyore. Isn't it? So Pat says, besides all the other books that she has, she would like to go home without books. So make sure to go and see Pat and get all the books she has. And come to table 29 and I will sign your copy for free. And if you've heard of Cedars of Lebanon, but you've never had the chance to go, God has brought Cedars of Lebanon to you. This communion set right here is made from the Cedars of Lebanon. I was fortunate enough for my sister to get that for me for my ordination. So if you wanna come and touch it and go home and say, I went and touched the cedars of Lebanon. You know what you're talking about, and other people will just wonder, what did you do in Smith's Falls? <laughs> all joking aside, I am honored to be sharing this service with you all, and I am grateful to everyone who is participating. And I am also humbled by this gathering in 2013, when I moved to the Bay of Quinty Conference, Elgin, Portland, I was like, oh, I miss my MNO friends and colleagues. But then, MNO came here, part of it. I love the Bay of Quinty, don't get me wrong. But I just wanna tell you that I'm responsible for this new region. <laughs> Because God said, daughter, I will give the desires of your heart. <laughs> so brought part of MNO to the part of Bay of Quinty, which we are so happy. So I invite you to just shut down. Shut down the cell phones, shut down your mind, what's going on at home what's going on at the pastoral charge office. 
I know tomorrow is Pentecost, and some of us were like, oh, man, I'm not going to be with my congregation on Pentecost. Well, I've got news for you, ministers. You don't need to be there because the Spirit is there. So we are here as we need to be here. So I invite you to enjoy these amazing people playing some music for us to center us and bring us together. in spirit and in body. Our gathering call is responsive, but it's a little bit different. There is parts for women and there is parts for men. So let us hear gathering call. It is responsive. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All that is green, blue, deep, and growing. God is the word that created you. All that is tender, firm, fragrant, or curious. God is the word that created you. All that crawls, flies, swims, walks, or is motionless. All that speaks, sings, cries, laughs, or keeps silence. God is the hand that created you. All that suffers, lacks, limps, or longs for an end. God is the hand that created you. The world belongs to God. God is faithful to the universe, creation, and creatures, and loves all from eternity to eternity. Beloved, no matter how much our lives change, how much our church policies and the forecourt becomes three or two or one, whatever happens. God's love never changes. And God is faithful from eternity to eternity. So let us sing together with all our hearts and being, great is thy faithfulness.
seated. I just got a text from God. It says the angels are jealous of your singing. It's a good time to lie because it's our confession prayer coming up. <laughs> All good. Beloved, we hear this over and over again, but it is never enough when we get so busy in the life of things to do. Therefore, it is a good reminder. God loves us from eternity to eternity. And as we sometimes wander off and let go, of holding the hand of the Holy One, God says, doesn't matter, I'm still with you. Because I hold you in the palm of my hand. You are the center of my heart. So let us pray together the prayer of confession and be reminded of God's great love once again. And we pray as one family. O oh Lord, if you held our sin against us, who could live? Who could stand? We seem to have more faith in death than hope in your promise of abundant life. We seek peace through war and find security in weapons. We abandon the hungry, sick, and dying, and pursue wealth by making others poor. And even so, you love us. Still, there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, we worship you, for you alone, O oh Lord, love us from eternity to eternity, and from our own shortfalls, you redeem us forever. Amen. Beloved, God is ever forgiving. The psalmist says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. Celebrate. Celebrate and know that you are beloved liberated sons and daughters of the Creator. Amen. We're going to sing called by earth and sky. If you're comfortable, remain seated, but if you still want to get up, feel free to do so. There's no rule book about it.
Amen. Please be seated, whoever's standing, or you can stand, it doesn't matter. Before we hear scripture this afternoon, I want to bring your attention to what Reverend Kathy Hamilton uh, talked yesterday. She referred to the prophet Ezekiel. And this morning, Reverend John referred to death and dying and so on. I promise you, we did not have a conference meeting to choose our topics and our passages. So I invite you to listen to the first reading that Barbara Krillman is going to read to us. Actually, as I looked at this this morning and I was listening to Blair, the words bone weary came to life. Reading from our Hebrew scriptures, selected texts from Ezekiel in the 37th chapter. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. And he said to me, mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and suddenly there was a noise, a, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied and he commanded, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, I will put spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. At this time, I would encourage you to sing with all of us. Listen, God is calling, and we'll sing it through three times. God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness. My name is Barb Dejeet and I'm from Christ United Church in Lynn, which is just a little community outside the city of Brockville. 
I'm bringing you the gospel reading this afternoon, John chapter 11, verses 1 to 44, and it's from The Message. A man named Lazarus was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the brother of Mary and Martha, and all three were friends of Jesus. The sister sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love so much is sick. Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus very much. But oddly, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed on where he was for two more days. After the two days, he said to his disciples, let's go and wake Lazarus up from his sleep. The disciples said, Master, if he's gone to sleep, he'll get a good rest and wake up feeling fine. Then Jesus became explicit and said, Lazarus died, and I am glad for your sakes that I wasn't there. You're about to be given new grounds for believing. Now let's go to him. When Jesus finally got there, he found Lazarus already four days dead. Bethany was near Jerusalem, only a couple of miles away, but Jesus took his time to get there. Many of the Jews were visiting Martha and Mary and sympathizing with them over their brother's death. Martha heard Jesus was coming and went to greet him. Mary remained in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Master, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will, raise, will be raised again. And Martha replied, yes, I know he will be raised again in the resurrection at the end of time. But Jesus said, you don't have to wait for the end of time. I am here right now. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, though he were dead and she dead, will live again. And everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? Yes, Master. All along I have believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who comes into the world. When Jesus saw how Mary, the other sister, was sobbing and the Jews were with her, they were sobbing as well, a deep anger welled up within him, and he said, Where have you put him? Master, come and see, they said. Now Jesus wept. Then Jesus arrived at the tomb. It was a simple cave in the hillside with a slab of stone laid against it. And Jesus said, remove the stone. The sister of the dead man, Martha, said, Master, by this time there's a stench. He's been dead for four days. Jesus looked her in the eye and said, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Then he turned to the others and said, go ahead, take the stone away. They removed the stone. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and prayed, saying, Father, I'm grateful that you have listened to me. I know you always do listen. But on account of this crowd standing here, I've spoken that they might believe that you sent me. Then he shouted, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus came out, a body wrapped from head to toe with a kerchief over his face. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him loose. May the spirit of wisdom, Sophia, add understanding to these words. Thanks be to God, amen. Please join me in your hearts for a short word of prayer. God of resurrection, you call us out of our graves for a new life, an abundant one. Therefore, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts and minds come from you and return to this earth for your glory. Amen. 
You can take the girl out of Lebanon and Armenia, but you can never have Armenia and Lebanon leave the girl. There are five feast days in the Armenian tradition that requires every Armenian breathing alive person to go and visit the burial plots of their loved ones on the Monday following those feast days. And the feast days are Epiphany, you call it Epiphany, I call it Armenian Christmas, Easter, Vartivar, which is the Feast of Transfiguration, Astvazadzin, the Feast of the Assumption of Mary, Holy Mother of God, to be exact, which is also a service of the blessing of the grapes. So, no true Armenian will ever eat grapes before they are blessed in August. And then the Feast of the Cross. The last four feasts do not have precise date as they change according to Easter. But Epiphany is always on January 6. My sources tell me that these cemetery pilgrimages are more than just visiting loved ones who are buried there. It is also a time of, to proclaim how our loved ones have made it to the other side of life victoriously. When I was a child, I barely experienced any victorious feeling during these processions. And I say processions because hundreds of people would walk together to the cemeteries. And this was not a fun thing to do for a young girl. Would your daughter or son do that? Every six times a year? And imagine the somberness of so many people walking to the Armenian Cemetery Center in Burj Hamoud, which is part of Beirut, where I was born. All the stores will be closed on that day, and everyone walked on those narrow streets to the specific denomination burial center that their family belonged to. I used to ask myself, why did I need to go anyway? I barely knew my grandparents, but I had no other choice. There was no entertainment for a kid like me. We didn't even have a television. We lived in a one-bedroom apartment, and we were nine of us. So I had no choice. My parents would not even leave me at home by myself. So we would go visit the burial plots of our loved ones, participate at a chapel service, and saddened even more than the time we walked there, we returned home hungry and exhausted. This was a dark and sad day. There was no victory to be celebrated here. At the end, I promise you, there's no Armenian test going on, so we're good. Today, the second day of our inaugural meeting of Region 12, it's just amazing. How can you bring a big beast like this to be possible? Only by God's grace. Thank you for all who have done the work behind the scenes to make this possible. So on our second day, what do dead bones in the valley tell us? What is the story of a man who's been dead for four days got to do with us? Maybe Tina Turner would say, what's death got to do with it? <laughs> and 
vacation stories. Who cares? We're living the 21st century life. Get with the program, Rev T. But let's talk about Lazarus. He comes back to life. He's, I have such a hard time saying this word, say it with me, resuscitated. Yes, thank you very much. He's resuscitated indeed. However, it is obvious that he has died again in the future. He's not alive anymore. Anyone has Lazarus on your Facebook friend? If any of you who are present here will say to me, I'm going to live forever here on earth in this physical form, let me know. Because maybe, just maybe, you have already visited Tweed <laughs> and had a tour of the company with a happy refreshment at the end. I've heard about it. I haven't been there yet. All joking aside, we know no one can and will live forever in this physical, material life. But friends, we have an advantage on history because we know the end of all the stories that have gone before us. I remember when I was leading the Armenian Evangelical Youth Group in Laval, Quebec for a few years, when The Passion of Christ, the movie, came out, the kids used to joke around and say, hey, Takuli, we know the end of the movie. Jesus will resurrect. There's no spoiling the ending. We know it. And in reality, we also know the beginning. We know the middle. And the end of all the stories of the Bible, that includes Ezekiel's and his people's story too. At this time of the vision, they were in exile. They were forced to leave their homes and go to Babylon as captives. Have you ever been forced to leave your own home, your own comfort place? Maybe you should talk to a refugee. It's not a fun thing to do. Or maybe you should talk to someone who had to rush after the floodings in Gatineau, Ottawa, and other areas. Or someone who's facing forest fires. Ezekiel sees visions and dreams from God that he would share with the people and offer hope. But true prophets were not so popular by many. They were considered to be fake news because they spoke a word out of place. In other words, they spoke out of the daily politically correct and acceptable lingo. Just like Apostle Paul says, he is a fool for Christ. These prophets were fools for God. Recently, I heard an interview with Thomas More, an American psychotherapist, former monk, and a writer of popular spiritual books. And from what I remember from this interview, he said something along the lines, dreams are messages that our souls are informing us. His words reminded me of Ezekiel's vision. Ezekiel reports that God's spirit came over him, took him to a valley filled with bones, and plunked him down in the middle of those bones. They were not just dead bones. It says, the scripture says, they were dry, dead bones. Like how specific can we get? But Ezekiel witnesses these bones come together miraculously, reassembling themselves as easy as a Lego pieces put together by a kid. But this is possible because of the Almighty, and the Almighty adds 
sinew, flesh, skin, and finally, breath, life, breath, life beyond imagination, breath, life, where, how, there is illness, there is dying, there is grieving, Lazarus is sick, Jesus, come fast, cure him. Wait, wait for it. Lazarus is dead. The man that Jesus loved. Is this story about two friends where one dies and the other one brings him back to life? Or is there more to this story? Of course there is, that is not a trick question. Like everything in the Bible and in life itself, there's always more to the story. There's always more to our own story than we can recognize each day. The Gospels were written from a vantage point of the post-Easter faith and this Gospel of John makes it clear their faith, their community faith is this Jesus, the Christ, is one with God. Every time we read a story in the Bible, it feels like we discover a new nugget that we have never heard before. There are always new nuggets to find even after you read the story 40 times because our context, our lives affects us changes our thinking, understanding, our lives evolve, change, expand, and develop. Many skeptics will ask, and they have every right to ask, did this story really happen? I always remember late Marcus Borg, who used to say, and he said that he learned this from the indigenous people, that whenever they start telling a story, they would say something like this. I'm about to tell you may not be correct with facts, but I will tell you this story is true. There was no Facebook or Instagram in Bethany, as far as I know, for us to have proof about the resurrection or resuscitation of Lazarus. However, after 2,000 plus years, since the story has been written, has been shared, it is still around front and center, unlike Facebook posts that disappear in about two, three days. Yes, this story is true. Why? Because God's power works in extraordinary ways beyond logic, beyond reason, beyond physical proof attached to it. Beloved, the first century Christians did not have the enlightenment to enlighten them, but they had experienced the true light of the world firsthand. They had seen the word made flesh in person, walked in the same footsteps, jumped into the same lake, and guess what? They broke bread together and they drank happily. That, that gave them the realization, the understanding that death does not have the last word. Eric, how do we say it in Quebec? Point final. Right? The resuscitation of Lazarus is not dependent on Martha's, Mary's, and Lazarus's faith or their bank account. It is dependent on the love of God through Jesus that calls Lazarus out of the tomb 
And just like the good shepherd calls the sheep and they recognize his voice, Lazarus recognizes the voice of Jesus beyond just his friend, his good shepherd. The other day we looked after a Portuguese water dog for five days. When the owner came back to pick her up, she needed no leash. She walked straight to the truck to go home with her owner walking right at the feet of her master. Even it was dark. And we know what darkness is in the rural country here in Portland. Made me wonder, how close are we walking with God? How are we handling the darkness that surrounds us? Recently, I found out that there was an article by CBC entitled, Canada set to lose 9,000 churches, warns a national heritage group. I really wish they would have said church buildings and not churches. And we hear ourselves gasping for air when we hear these reports. I really wish that we would stop making our church buildings our golden calf that separates us from God. Maybe times seem dark. I know darkness. We didn't see the sun for 10 days in 1978 when there was bombing going on nonstop. But God seems sometimes to be doing nothing, but God is there. If you don't want to read the entire Bible, just read Genesis 1-2. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God hovering over the waters. Beloved, all these life-giving stories are not only in the Bible. God is not finished yet with us. God gives us life-giving stories each and every day. You and I are still writing the Bible with our lives. You and I are God's sacred story. As Jesus calls the people to unbind Lazarus, today he calls us, the communities of faith, the United Church of Canada, every region and every single pastoral charge, every single church to unbind our old assumptions and stop suffocating ourselves. And this applies to both communal and individual lives. I want to conclude with this thought. Whose birthday is Monday, June 10th? Who? United Church. United Church of ours is turning 94. Maybe just like any person who turns 94, we need to look closely to the things we have accumulated in our attics and see what we need to keep and what we need to get rid of from the attics of our lives. Have a big garage sale. But be careful. Do not mix God's treasures with trash. And don't get rid of everything all at the same time because you're fed up. God did not resuscitate Jesus temporarily like Jesus did Lazarus, but God resurrected Jesus. There is a huge difference. Pilgrims, beloved, let us stop going to the cemetery plots of our faith communities in sadness and stop saying, those were the days. Do not mourn the past. Celebrate what you've had. Celebrate what you have. 
and look forward with joy for the future. The voice of Jesus says, roll the stone, come out, unbind, let go and live, and live abundantly. Live the true resurrection because it is only at the dawning of the new day we can confidently proclaim with Mary, I have seen the Lord. And that, my friends, is God's sacred story, which is our true story. Thanks be to God. Amen. And when you call for me, we will sing English, French, and English. I invite you to close your eyes as you're comfortable for a short prayers of hope and healing. I will follow it up with the prayer that Jesus taught his followers and I'm going to offer it to you in Armenian as it is Pentecost tomorrow. Holy One, when you call for us, we hear you in the depths of our hearts. Sometimes we try to ignore you. Help us. Help us not only to hear your call, but also to listen to your invitation to partner up with you and work together wholeheartedly. As an infant region, at the dawn of these new beginnings, we pray for your spirit to guide us in darkness. We pray that hope is never lost, even when we feel dried up and cut off from life sometimes. Help us, O Holy One, to see your grace opening up graves of our lives and of our communities and give a brand new life. Give us new breath. Give us ruach. Remind us that death does not have power over us. We pray for all who are grieving and missing the way we were. Wipe away the tears, O oh God, with new courage in the midst of fear. May we continue this journey with your presence of peace that only your faithfulness and love can grant. Help us to open our hearts, ears, and eyes where we can hear your spirit, see the new light of the dawning of the new day, and know that you are with us. 
May we be aware of your presence with us with every breath and step we take. Therefore, we pray in the name of Jesus, who is resurrection and life, who is also the head of the church. Amen. The Lord's Prayer in Armenian. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, and we will do the prayer of the day, and it is responsive. If you would enter the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are. Beloved, made by the one who has traveled this path before us. Do not go without letting it echo in your ears. And if you find it is hard to let it into your heart, do not despair. I cannot promise this blessing will free you from danger. From fear, from hunger and thirst, from scorching of the sun, from all the night. But I can tell you that on this path there will be help. On this way there will be rest. I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this. That comes alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear and with their curious insistence whisper our name. Beloved, beloved, beloved. Amen. There are little cups on your table with instructions. We're going to do a little bit of an anointing of each other. It's not going to take long. This is an ancient practice. You can read about it later on.
but I invite you to take a cup, each person, and anoint the person on your right hand side and then go around like that. Our conclusion is responsive. Arise, dry bones, and live! The charge? Please, the charge? It's not the credit card, it's the charge. All right, let's do this again. Arise, dry bones, and live! <laughs> Lazarus and give glory to God. Beloved, may God's faithfulness, Christ's compassion, and the Spirit's wisdom, Sophia, continue to meet you in the unexpected places of life and give you courage to unbind one another and discover God's new way of being. Filled with peace, continue this journey and travel on with happy feet. Amen.